next guest has been plugged into clean tech for more than 30 years, first as an aide in the Carter administration and now as a venture capitalist. Steve Wesley was on the guest list when President Obama met with technology heavyweights in Silicon Valley last month, and he's no stranger to our California viewers. He served as the state's controller and chief fiscal officer and ran for governor back in 2006. Before that, he helped guide eBay through its most rapid period of growth as a senior vice president. Steve, thanks for joining us on Bloomberg West. Welcome. You bet. Happy to be here. So I want to talk first about this dinner with President Obama and I mean, tech icons like Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. I'm so curious, what happened that night? Can you bring us into the room? Well, it was a private dinner, and I can't say a lot about that. But what I can say is the president's focused like a laser on creating jobs, on innovation, and on the tech economy. And I think he's doing all the right things. We just saw in the State of the Union address, he's cutting back in a number of areas, but doubling down on R&D, workforce retraining, basic education. I think we've got a president who gets technology, who certainly gets Silicon Valley. So President Obama is obviously banking on technology to create jobs. But the interesting thing is that technology often can make jobs obsolete. What kind of jobs do you think will be created? And what kind of role do you think clean tech, for example, will play? Well, look, I think everybody gets, we're moving into a technology century. And the whole question that this president, and frankly, every president should think about in our lifetime is, how do we make sure that the U.S. wins the future? This is why President Obama comes to Silicon Valley so often. Now, obviously, he's making a big bet on clean tech job growth. I think you're going to see a lot of growth in the solar sector, in wind, in electric vehicles, and other areas. Solar alone, $3.6 billion last year. This year, expecting over $6 billion in revenues, doubling again next year. That's a lot of jobs. That's an industry sector we have to win. Steve, let me ask you about the kind of jobs we're talking about here, though, because it seems like there's, you know, Google's hiring engineers, but Amazon, as Emily mentioned, you know, they're hiring for warehouses. But technology typically takes jobs away. You know, if Amazon hires 600 people, they're probably putting 1,000 people at bookstores out of work. I wonder, you know, what kind of jobs we're talking about here, and are there jobs for everybody in America? Well, look, I think technology creates as many, if not more, jobs than it takes away. The simple factor is this. We were losing, for example, auto jobs for the last 40 years in America. They were moving overseas. Yet with electric cars, we're seeing firms like Tesla Motors, which has just gone public, is building its newest auto facility in Fremont, California. So I think technology over time is going to create more jobs. The U.S. has historically been the technology leader. Our challenge is to make sure we continue to be the technology leader. Uh, you were an investor in Tesla, is that right, uh, before the launch? Uh, we were one of the major investors in Tesla Motors, and we're very proud about that. Now, are you still there? Are you still in the stock? Uh, we've distributed all of our uh, stock uh, just a few months ago. Personally, I'm a holder. I think Tesla's best days are ahead of it. Uh, well, let me ask them specifically about Tesla, because it's a company I'm very interested in. When you look at the launch of their car, how many of the, of the new under you know, $60,000 cars, I think it's the S car, do they have to get out this year for you to think that investment's going to work for you? Well, the investment's already worked. It's been a huge payoff for us. But what the company has recently predicted in their recent earnings statement is that they will move about 5,000 of their new Model S sedans in 2012 and as many as 20,000 the following year. But what's even more important to realize about Tesla is for all those auto companies that did not realize just how quickly electric cars were coming, Tesla is becoming one of the major providers of batteries to large firms like Daimler and Toyota. This is what I think is going to continue to drive the company's valuation up. I think it's a good investment. We've been talking all week long about the University of California system. How important do you think the UC schools are in sending a, ta a pipeline of top talent to these companies in Silicon Valley? This is one of the most important investments we can make. The United States, and California in particular, has the best public university system in the world. This is precisely why we have been the world's technology leader over the last half century. President Obama gets this. We have to continue to in, uh, invest in higher ed to make sure we keep our nation's economy on top. So you ran for governor. You also supported Jerry Brown, Governor Jerry Brown. And now he's proposing more budget cuts uh, for the UC system. Do you think that's going to threaten this pipeline of talent? Well, it's a shame, but we have to get through these tough budget times. I think Jerry Brown's doing exactly the right things in this context. But please note, the economy's already coming back. Over time, Jerry Brown gets and President Obama gets. You have to invest 
in the nation's university system for our economy to stay on top. And I think both will do just that. Steve, let me also ask you, when you look at some of your technology investments, do you think about support, you know, going for heavy employment industries, going for industries that sort of support some of the things you've talked about in your various candidacies, or do you look for ways to make money first and employment second? We invest investors' money from around the country, pension funds, universities, uh, endowments. So our goal has to be to invest in things where we think we'll get the maximum return. But I can tell you, clean tech is an area that is booming. I think it's one of the smartest places in the world to invest, and we're creating a lot of jobs. Tesla alone will have over 1,000 jobs by next year. Um, we're seeing some of the fastest growing companies of the world in the clean tech sector. California alone, 174,000 new jobs in clean tech alone. Those numbers are a harbinger of good things for the future. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about your role in the clean tech industry. What technologies do you think are the most promising? Where are you putting your money? Like there are a lot of areas that we're interested in. Obviously, solar, wind, everything in the renewable uh, portfolio. We're very interested in electric cars. We like biofuels. But one of the areas that's perhaps least talked about that we like most is energy efficient building materials, green building materials. Almost 40% of the nation's energy is used by buildings. We think there's some huge opportunities there in LED lighting, software building management controls, the skins of buildings, smart glass. You're going to see a revolution in clean building materials. Venture capital investments in clean tech actually dropped from $11.8 billion in 2008 to $8.7 billion last year, according to data that Bloomberg has compiled. A number of other venture capitalists have expressed concern about investing in clean tech and green tech. Are they wrong? Well, I think they're absolutely wrong. And look, there are ups and downs in venture investing all the time. Q4 was one of the biggest investment quarters in clean tech ever. Now. What many people say is there weren't as many exits as people had hoped, and that happens. For our firm, we had three companies go public last year alone. It was a banner year, and I think this year is going to be better. Firms like Silver Spring, Mia Soleil, Solazon, you're going to see a lot of activity. And I will tell you right now, by the end of the year, people will be saying, clean tech, it's hot again. So, Steve, let me ask you about your investments and how you find these investments. Do you try to uh, develop a, an industry-specific expertise and find out leaders in that? Or do you sort of wait for the right companies to knock on your door and say, geez, this looks good, this could be big, I'm in? We don't wait for anything. The more proactive you are, the better you are, the more deals you see, the more likely you are to find the next Google or eBay. So we are literally looking proactively throughout the world for what we think will be the next big thing in these different areas, whether it's new battery technology in China, breakthroughs in solar or desalinization in Israel. We have a global screen, and we're looking for the best and brightest companies all the time. Talk to me about when you try to imagine your investment return. I'm always curious about venture capital in terms of you're there so early. Do you try to pencil it out and figure this could lead to this size of industry if they get this chunk of the total addressable market? and? profits might be such, or do you just sort of say, this is a good one, it's a profitable business, who knows where it's going to turn out? We don't do much by the seat of our pants. Everything we do is methodical. We're projecting everything. We're doing discounted cash flow analysis all the time. And that's part of why our firm has a 32% IRR net of fees. You've got to be methodical in this business or you can lose money. We don't plan to lose a penny. What do you think is the environment like for clean tech IPOs this year? Are we going to see some big companies go out? Again, I think you will, but keep in mind, people say, oh my gosh, last year was so bad. We saw Tesla go out. That's a $2.3 billion company today. We saw uh, Amaris go out right here in the Bay Area, $1.4 billion. We're seeing a lot of great companies, and those two continue to go on up. Again, you're going to see a big backlog, Solazheim, Silver Spring, Mia Soleil. I think a lot of good companies will come to market, and a lot of these firms already have revenues over $100 million. They're real companies, and they have potential to be multi-billion dollar companies. With budget cuts happening all over the place, what role do you think the government should play in supporting clean technology? I think the government has a key role to play. And the key thing is consistency. If you have something like the ITC tax credit for solar or wind, you need to let people know that it is a two or three or four year program. The private sector looks for consistency to government. By the way, the Chinese government does this. We need to be doing the same thing here. 
Do you look for industries in, in big transition? I'm, I'm curious with the building material stuff, not least of which because I've purchased a lot in the last year. But do you try to find industries that are being replaced by clean tech or do you look for new industries being created? We look for both. And let me just give you an example. Lighting. Our whole lives we've been used to incandescent life and also fluorescent lights. There is now a revolution where we're moving to LED lights and with uh, smart lighting controls. You will see a revolution in lighting in our lifetimes. People are going to make billions of dollars. Same thing's happening in autos. It was inconceivable five years ago that people would be driving cars that were not internal combustion vehicles. This last year, China has said they will sell or put over one million electric vehicles on the road. Volt and Nissan Leaf have both announced they're going to double capacity in the U.S. You're going to see a lot of electric vehicles on the road starting late this year. So I'm curious about, sticking with the example of LED lighting, your background in both technology and investing, as well as in, in politics and in government, LED lighting is required, or, or at least low, high efficiency lighting is required of all new home construction in the state of California because of government mandate driving that business. Do you get involved on a government level to try to create mandatory requirements or at least opportunities for these kinds of investments to help these industries that you've invested in move along? You've put your finger on exactly why this is such a big business. People say, gosh, will some of this clean tech stuff go away if the government subsidies go away? The fact is, most all government subsidies will go away in two or three years, and I would argue that's just plain good policy. But the government's going to continue to mandate higher fuel efficiency standards for cars. The government is going to mandate that a larger and larger percentage of all of our energy in California is produced by renewables. So expect to see more clean tech companies go public. Never in our lifetimes has there been an industry segment where governments, not just in the U.S., federal and state, but around the planet, are putting such a concerted press, uh, pressure to bring alternative energy to market more quickly. Steve will be watching to see if it's going to be as big a year in clean tech as you say. Steve Wesley of the Wesley Group, thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg West. Thank you for having me.